What's up, guys? Welcome to the Please. first you, ever Shannon. episode 79 of the Kind of Funny Games cast. Oh, as always, like... I'm Tim this is, this is, no, this is, I, I didn't mean like the sound of uh, it. I just meant the uh, movement of it. He's like a figure skater. Yeah. Going down I've been there. known to, to skate in some yeah. figures. We are all doing it, Kevin. Dude, Guess what? I We're going to have a fun show today. I saw a video of choreographed swimmers. And they were like doing dances, and they did uh, "Let It Go" from Frozen. Yeah. And there was some guy outside of the pool. They're, they're Japanese, of course, because they're the most creative motherfuckers in the entire goddamn world. Okay. They're out there. There's the one leader, and he's just going like this, and the people will jump out of the water like they're. Oh, ice. that's awesome! It was great. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. how can we do that? And I realized we can't do that. As always, I'm joined by <laughs> the coolest dudes in video games, Colin Moriarty and Greg Miller. <laughs> and joining us today for the first time ever on this show at this table. We got Jared Petty. Uh, two things here. Yeah. The Reverend. Yeah. Thank you so much for welcoming me. First, I, an absolute honor to be here. I love what you guys do on the show. But second, I didn't realize we were actually recording. I thought oh, we were yeah. still doing sound checks oh, until no. right now. So that was kind of funny. Yeah. That's how we do things. Kevin okay. starts being Kevin, and we're like, let's go. Yeah, I was just staring <laughs> blankly like, wait yeah, a minute. We're Kevin recording. Yeah, okay. we look, Kevin. <laughs> Give me this. Give me this. Pull out the, yeah. the scary part. All right, what you got? This is what Kevin's doing right he's now. He's playing with a series. He's just blade. playing with this. I don't envy Kevin's job, but I also know that he could do it better. Where it's just like he sits over there producing the show, but he's always building something or opening is that what, a box. Is that what it's called? My favorite, is what it's called remember, producing? Do you remember? I'm gonna, Kevin, you're going to need some props from here in a second. Do you remember a few weeks ago when we were doing a show, we were having a great discussion, and he... All of a sudden, just out of the blue, just, uh, jumped up, army crawled down there, went up into there, went back down, army crawled back, and he brought those two metal things, which he proceeded to do nothing with. <laughs> They're Pass still them sitting over. there. They are still just sitting there, not constructed, not anchored to a wall. Oh, he just, but all of a sudden, he's just like, oh, I need those. <laughs> How can I be as distracting and annoying as possible during the show? That's what I, I like that he has kind of this, like, like Roz from Fraser Station over there. He's got, like, a little producer <laughs> mic kind of hanging he's down. Roz. And just look over there and just be like, hey, what Maybe do you I think, Roz? Just so you know, the whole reason I had to do that is, it w also, it was, like, it was during a call in Greg Live. So it was during it was a show, is what I said. Okay. A show. Like, a, a not important show that sucks. Then you should just walk in front of the camera. Well, no, I didn't want to. You're gonna tell me Colin flow. and Greg live sucks, and this and this show doesn't suck. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest with you. Everything we do sucks. Yeah. Kevin, it's fine the way it is. That's why everyone likes us. That's empirically second untrue. What I want you to empirically do is, untrue. Of all, no, what I want you to do is get a bathrobe, and that's and just cross in front of the camera whenever whenever you need that. to cross I in front of the camera. Get a bathrobe. Oh my god, yeah. yes. Speaking of producing, shout out to Patreon producer Steven Insler. As Steven Insler always, is a, ma a he machine. Is the machine. Sometimes I worry that he, he died. Actually Steven <laughs> he the machine. He pledged Insler. one month to be the Patreon producer, then and died, and his like, credit card just rolls yeah. over. That's a real producer. Steven Insler is a real producer, Ooh. Kevin. Yeah. What was your second thing? Uh, Nick called me. He said, I need to know right now if we have those because I'm about to order more. What those little and You were like, let me check, then pulled them out of the closet, crawled back with them. I'm like, I got him, I'm holding him. No, I took a picture of him, and I said, are these it? Okay, well, first, are these it? Those don't fit together, right? Don't, don't like, even try, don't go down this path with them. Okay. And then I, after good this. Good job, Kevin, all I'm going to say is good job. There's another work. segue are going back to the page. Speaking of Patreon, Jared Petty. <laughs> yeah. You have a Patreon now. I do. I have a Patreon now. I, yes, it, it unveils uh, this, this, this very week. Oh, my oh, God. So at yeah. the time you're listening to this, whether, wait, even Theater. if they're, even if they're, uh, early, even if they're all even Patreon if they're early, users, it's still it's still there. Yeah, okay. even if they're Patreon, it's it already out. live right now. It's a soft launch that's for actually specifically for this audience, uh, oh. and then uh, opening everything up on August the first. Um, so patreon.com slash, slash Jared, Jared Petty. Petty. And yep, what is it? It's called Pockets Full of Soup. Uh, it's a little show about the stories that we tell every week. We're going to bring a different interesting person on, like some of the people at this table and others that you might know. And all, all silliness aside, we're going to sit down and ask them about other people. This is a show where people talk about the human beings they're thankful for. The idea is to create a positive vibe. It's I, So I've got, I've got a couple of these in the can, and I thought, well, you know, this, this could be a fun thing, kind of a passion project, a, a sort of Bob Ross of the internet. Hey, let's make this, you know, really, really nice, really for heartfelt. Right? You know, not for painting, for, for nicest. He's always these happy little yeah, tree. Yeah, happy little and trees. I was worried it was going to come off a saccharine. Or, but the episodes that I have in the can right now, which are which are Brian Antonio and, and Max Scoville. Never heard of them. They're, they're really touching. Uh, and funny and sweet, and I was like, "This came out way better than I thought it would." So, um, yeah, we d we. Uh, hey, this isn't bad. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is something I do. Of course, my my day job's at IGN.com. It's something I love doing. I make all kinds of neat things there. I'm privileged to work there. This is a, a passion project. It's not entertainment related. This is about the stories we have about our lives and the people that have influenced us, made us who we are, the people that have changed us, the people we're most grateful for, and also some fun little tidbits there in the middle. I. I 
you know, to make this happen, I really need people's help. So um, patreon.com slash Jared Petty. And uh, I really do hope uh, folks will come check out. They can watch this on YouTube. They can find links to the site right there. They can, uh, you know, we're going to have some neat little reward type stuff to give out. Um, boy, I'm selling this well. No, uh, great. But, you, I mean, you are. Uh, I mean, that's the thing. These people are familiar. <laughs> and if you're not familiar with Patreon, you can get all our content early. Patreon.com slash kind of funny games. And if not, you can just go to YouTube.com slash kind of funny games and get the show then. Whenever you want. Kevin, What's give me the gun in the bag. He's Take slowly trying bag. to give it to yeah. me. Okay, Jesus thank you. Christ. The Superboy is out of the bag now. Everybody chill out. You have no games to play with it over there, Kevin, but the Superboy from Hyperkin has been oh, put out. Don't I have any games? No, that's a flask. <laughs> you just That's not a real game either. You're just you grabbing. You know that. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so there's a lot of segues going on now. Speaking of Nintendo. Yeah. Mm. We're going to talk about the NX. This is it. This is the NX. That that's is. the NX right there. Confirmed. Now, kind of. Before we get started, uh -huh. do we want to give a date and time of this recording? Because last time we tried to talk about NX nope. rumors, we got You're right. Up. I was just going to do that. So here's the thing. Right now, it is July 26th. Okay. As of today, we are talking about the, the, the Eurogamer rumors of the NX, which seem more legit than any previous NX rumors 100%. we've ever had. IGN.com did confirm with their secondary source. And so did Kotaku. Yeah, yeah. So we're getting a lot of like, all right, this is starting to be a real thing. Starting to feel okay, like, so what do we know? What do we know? What do we know? Eurogamer reports. Nintendo's upcoming NX will be a portable handheld console with detachable controllers. A number of sources are Confirmed to Eurogamer. On the move, NX will function as a high-powered handheld console with its own display. So far, so normal. But here's the twist. We've heard the screen is bookended by two controller sections on either side, which can be attached or detached as required. Then, when you get home, the system can connect to your TV for gaming on the big screen. A base unit or dock station is used to connect the brain of the NX within the controller to display on your TV. NX will use game cartridges as its choice of physical media, multiple sources have also told us. Considering NX's basis as a handheld First and foremost, the choice may not come as too much of a surprise, although we have heard the suggestion that Nintendo recommends a 32 gigabyte cartridge. Mm -hmm. So that's mm. Blu-ray, we're talking 2550 gigs yeah. normally. So that's right yeah. in the ballpark. Right, cartridge that. check has changed so much that optical media doesn't matter nearly as much as it used to. They're, it's so cheap now to make a cartridge that it's not a deterrent anymore. Yeah. So inside the NX, as stated above, the system will harness NVIDIA's powerful mobile processor Tegra. Graphical comparisons with current consoles are difficult due to the vastly different nature of the device. But once again, we've heard Nintendo is not chasing graphical parity. Quite the opposite, it's sacrificing power to ensure it can squeeze all of this technology into a handheld, something which also tallies, earlier, tallies with earlier reports. So it will be less powerful than the PS4. Kotaku backs a lot of this up, saying, unlike many previous NX rumors, this Eurogamer rumor has weight. Although Kotaku has not been able to confirm all the details, we've heard similar rumors and have been seen some secondhand and corroboration on specifics, including the, the NX's portability and use of cartridges. Finally, we've heard from one source that the NX planning has recently moved up a gear within Nintendo ahead of the console's unveiling, which is currently slated for September. After the confused PR fiasco that Wii U launched, the company's already settling on a simple marketing message for NX of being able to take your games with you on the go. Good news? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I think this is I think this is good news, absolutely. This uh, sounds awesome. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like, I mean, I feel like it, I was talking about it today on Connor Greg Live. If you go back and listen to the old games cast where we've talked about this before, this is always what I'm saying. I thought it was going to be. I think I, I might have thought I, I talk about beaming it to your TV all the time. And that's what it is. And that um, immediately is super exciting. You know, I, I love the Vita. I, I travel so much. The idea of sitting on a plane and playing the full fledged Zelda colon the summer breeze of wind eve it's i can't wait i'm very excited for yeah that. well they're, they're breaking on that down that two-tier development wall i mean the, part of the problem that vita had early on was that it was very expensive to develop you know quote unquote triple a games for this handheld and the, there was a lot of kind of an identity crisis when you also had a high-powered console there's not going to be an competitor inside its own ecosystem right you're just going to target one platform they're going all in on something i do think it's it's a fascinating reversal of fortune to, to take you know the wii u which I like the Wii U in a lot of ways, but it, it's its software library never became what it needed to be. They, they, they fumbled the ball in many different ways. But the Wii U is fundamentally something where you have a more powerful unit sending something to a dummy. Now it's the other way around. You're The power's in your hands, and the dummy's what's connected to your TV. This is a recognition of a lot of different things. I think they're hoping this will play well in Japan, where, frankly, people play most of their games on handheld. Mobile there, yeah. I think uh, that, that they're recognizing the switch to mobile here. I think they, you know, they, they've, they've watched what's happened when they've started to kind of let some of their uh, some of their properties trickle out into the wild and some mobile experimentation with Mitomo and now we see what they're doing with the the Pokemon company and Niantic in uh, in Pokemon Go. Why not? This is this 
it's going to be it's going to come out of the software. Can they do? Will they have the support? Will they have the games that we want at launch? And will they keep games coming for three years after that? I think that's the bigger question. And I think the the solution is there in the fact that if they're not making 3ds and Wii U games and they're just focusing on the NX games, I yeah, think that right. then all of a sudden there is a lot of games. Like the when you look at the 3ds output, the vast library over there, it's like it has you know every couple months there'd be something. You look at the Wii U is a little less than that, maybe like twice a year there'd be something. But when you add those together right. and all those people working on games with one cause and even third parties when you look at the third parties that are making 3ds games um no one's really making wii u games but if you, they're suddenly making nintendo console games which is the nx that's a solid lineup and especially if it is unique games that are uh, the, the nintendo games you know the people want nintendo games and nintendo consoles that's the only reason the wii u even sells what it does sell right mm -hmm. right so if there was one dedicated thing you always talk about nintendo being a toy yeah and this i think is Total, total, total recognition that they're not competing with the PS4 100%. and Xbox One in the console space. And this is a, it's an approach that I didn't even really think was possible because this sounds too logical for Nintendo. <laughs> I was so worried that when we, the, the hybrid, I've said this before on the Gamescast, that I don't like the idea of the hybrid. Like that, it, it bothers me because I always thought of it the other way around. I thought of it as, oh, it's going to be, it's a console, but then you can take it with you on the go, but that would be a dumbed down experience. It being the other way around, I am so sold on this, and this is this is what I want. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's smart. Um, I'm not going to go as far as Greg to say this is awesome or whatever that. I don't think we know that. I think that this is the, I think the only thing we know is that this is, the, again, the most logical conclusion of what they can possibly do with their hardware, as opposed to just getting out entirely, which I still think is the smartest move for them. Um and I still, I, I don't care what the what the NX looks like. Uh, it's not going to do well enough for them to justify. I don't think them not getting out. But um, the NX to me sounds expensive, um, which is a uh, which is going to be a problem for them. Battery life is going to be a problem, probably. Yeah, that'd be um, a huge problem. And uh, yeah. but I do agree with with Jared in terms of the optical media argument. Um, the fact of the matter is, the last time Nintendo used cartridges the way we think about them was N64, but really in reality, they've been using cartridges actually on their handhelds for a long time. And I think that's more like what you're gonna see, something in between what a 3DS uses and what a Vita uses. Um, that stuff's cheap, even on a 32 gigabyte level, um, that is way cheaper. So there's not gonna be this, everyone's like, these games are gonna be expensive. I'm like, no, they're not. Um, they're not gonna be any more expensive than the games you play now. Uh, that's just not logic, that's just not sound at all. They're not gonna, Nintendo's not gonna come out and charge you $80 for a game, it's just not gonna happen. So. Um, I think it's smart. I'm excited about it. I'm interested in it. I, I think what's going to be important to Jared's point is uh, the games that are going to be ready. Clearly, Zelda is going to be a launch game. But what um, what else are they going to have? Uh, I still think a Metroid game is obvious. Uh, Retro has been quiet for a while. And mm -hmm. um, so I think that they're, they're going to have some interesting guns blazing and managing their portfolio. I think is going to be really important for this. Um, I do think this alienates third parties uh, again um, without being on par without having parity with PS4 and Xbox one. People are going to have to make their experiences exclusive to this. Uh, I am sure that a lot of publishers are going to do something, um, mm -hmm. and they're not going to see returns on it probably, and so they're going to stop. I mean, this is what happens. Vita. This is what happened with Vita. This is what happened with yeah. Wii U. This is what happened uh, p with yeah PSP. Is what happened even to a degree with GameCube. And the only reason that they kept getting GameCube games is because they were paying for them, um, which is what they did with Wii U too to a degree with second party relationships, which is what I think is going to really be. Um, the possible saving grace of this of this thing. That said, uh, Nintendo's handhelds are what dominates, and so um, I think that this is this is a, a really exciting thing. I'm just really interested to see what is the infrastructure, online infrastructure. How does that work? Is there a trophy and achievement system? Um, how does the store work? How does it function with Wii U and 3DS? Remember, this was supposed to be kind of a pillar, um, similar to the GBA, GameCube, DS kind of thing back in the day. Um, and I'm super interested as well to see um, how people react to it because everything I've been, or not everything, but a lot of what I've been seeing is largely negative. So. Um, Nintendo is certainly working uh, against that negative uh, wave, although I don't really see what's there to be negative about because we don't. It sounds fun. It sounds nice. And we don't know enough to really be negative about it yet. So I think that that would be foolhardy to, 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 to jump down that lane. The negativity right now on day one, right, at this because we're coming at this right as this news comes, I think is the fact that a lot of people had, were either didn't agree with me or argued against them being a toy company and marching the beat of their own drum. And da -da -da. I think a lot of people wanted them to come back. They wanted this to be the NX to be the system where Nintendo comes back and like, all right, no, we are games and we're competing with PlayStation, we're competing with Xbox, and we're going head to head and we're going to do this. And this right now is a clear definition that they aren't. And again, that's what's exciting about it for me. If it was just another, all right, cool. I mean, eventually I'd pick it up for Kart or for Mario or for Zelda, mm -hmm. all that. But the idea of, I mean, I love Vita. You know, I love my Vita. I love playing games on the go. But I, I do when I, when I take the Vita with me, I'm like, man. It'd be awesome if there was a Fallout on this. It would be awesome if there was this kind of game on this. And there's things that are close to it, but not. The Zelda I played at E3, if I can play that on a plane sitting there like that, 
Fuck yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that is the most mind blowing thing is that that we know that is going to happen. We don't know if this is correct, but yeah, yeah. going off of it, the if this is correct, that means that that Zelda game is playable wherever you want portably. Then you can take it to your house or to anyone at right. a hotel or whatever, connect it and play it. That's crazy. So you many know? people, you know, with the Wii U, like this came up on a uh, Collinger Live today. Of some guys, like, well, what's the difference between this and the Wii U gamepad? You could play games on that. And I was like, yeah, and I made a joke about like, being 14 inches from it or whatever, like being tethered to it. But it was true that people really enjoyed that feature of mm -hmm. oh, when yeah. people first got their Wii U's, they moved into the bedroom so they could sit there and watch TV with their wives or whatever and play games. Or I, you know, I always saw like the super obsessed people playing on a plane where they had it plugged in on the Virgin America thing and then just playing the pad and they're like, and like to eliminate having to have that thing, having it plugged in, having to carry that Wii U console with you, mm -hmm. just having the tablet. If it, even if the tablet is as shitty as the Wii U tablet is, which I pray it isn't, that would <laughs> still be no cool. Way. There's no way it can be. That's, and that's the big thing that's, that's here's the real talk about, about, real NX talk. about, <laughs> Wii, about Wii U and why they have to learn a lot from 3DS or whatever. 3DS and Wii U are really shitty pieces of hardware. I mean, just from, just from a build perspective, like 3DS is just a bad piece of hardware. Like we might like the games on it and it might've sold, you know, exceptionally well, but compared to something that like is a real electronic, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but something like the Vita is like, like really like shames it in terms of hardware build. What's, what's your issue with like the new 3DS? What would be the, the... new 3DS? I'm not so talking, but what, but the, 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 all the clamshell models are flimsy. They're, they're just, they're just pieces of, they're just, they're not, they need to do better than that. The Wii U is a, a bridge too far for me, even from there. Like the Wii U is, the Wii U's uh, gamepad is fucking trash and, and they need to, they need to make something that, and I do think that they're going to have something that is sturdy and feels like an electronic device. It needs to feel like an Apple device or a Sony device or a Microsoft device. Something that's like that you feel like you're not going to break it in half or like something that like isn't this flimsy little piece of toy plastic, or whatever. That's why I'm I'm concerned with the, with with cost and how much this thing mm -hmm. is going to cost because Nintendo has to hit that sweet spot. You would think the sweet spot's two ninety nine, but this thing sounds if if everything's you know it's going to have a nice battery in it. It's going to have to have a nice screen. It's going to have all sorts of, you know, uh, gyro in it, all sorts of Wi-Fi and all sorts of yeah. things. It's probably going to be like $400. So the, you know, uh, I don't it's, think it, that's crazy, though. I think $400. I think, well, I, think for, I think for their target audience, it probably is. Yeah, and, I, I, and, I, and, and, that's, and that's a major concern for me. But they have to see this is the catch 22 that they're in now. They have to. Yeah. You can't have something that I don't care about the internal power of the machine so much as the build of the, of the build of the machine. And again, you can learn a lot from um just pretty much all of the major electronics that are out there in the in the wild about how to make a proper electronic. I mean, put put the Wii U gamepad or the 3DS next to an Apple phone or an iPad, you know, like and I'm not comparing the two things, but like in terms of what their, their functionality, but in terms of like their build, in terms of the fact that you feel like you're getting something that's valuable, that you're getting something that's not going to break, that you get something that like an adult would use. I don't know. Like, I, I feel like that I feel like that is relevant to the audience. And clearly the Wii U was injured at least partially by the fact that the gamepad sucked and the Oh, and the game no, sucked I, that I, I, I think I that, it was I think we're confusing maybe build quality and industrial design. I mean, I, I feel like you could run over my, my 3DS with a tank and a 2DS I think you could fell a tree with. If you attach it to it to a stick, even though it's ugly and horrible, the the industrial design that it's not aesthetically beautiful. It is more toy like. Greg talked about being a toy company. I, I take it a little farther. I think they want to be the Walt Disney Company. Mm -hmm. I think they want to be a character licensing, theme park, cartoon making, and oh yeah, we also do video games company. Um, I, I think increasingly they'd like to be an entertainment conglomerate, and that that's the direction they're headed. Toys are a huge part of that, but I think that's only the beginning of what they'd like to do. But I think that the 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 quality of the products is fine. I. I, I don't have a, I don't think they're chintzy. Uh, I just think that they're designed to be kiddish. And I think this will look less kiddish. I think they learned the lesson on that. But I mean, you talk about an Apple product, it, it feels hefty in your hand, but if you drop one face down on the ground, it will break instantly. I, I think I could throw my 3DS on the concrete and I'm not sure it would shatter. And so I, I, I don't think it's a, it's that factor so much as is it designed to appeal to a broad, large number of people? And I absolutely agree with you in the cost problem. Because there are a lot of parts that are going into this thing that are going to cost a fortune. That battery scares the heck out of me. Yeah, mm -hmm. the battery is a big part of it. Uh, and that's we 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 know Vita. We love Vita here. Everybody here loves Vita. Vita is Vita is the best. Vita Vita is wonderful. Um, Correct. Call all right. Yeah, Sorry. It's, yeah. It's, it's, go to the Vita Island. But um, but Vita, you know the the. The, the balance between power and cost for the Vita has been a problem since day one and remains one. Nintendo's original Wii debuted at a price point of 
years. I think we forget how important that was to its early success. Beyond the novelty, beyond the fact that that it was doing neat little technical things you'd never seen before, it was significantly cheaper than its competitors when it was brand new. And that really helped that first push. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And that's the the case I'm making. Like To get mom and dad comfortable buying you this machine, or for you as a gamer, an adult, being comfortable going out and buying that machine, you feel like you have to get your cost. Now, $400 is not going to be, you know, I'm going to buy one probably, depending on what they show, because I want to come back into the fold and start playing these games but i actually think again like the network features um and ubiquity of the machine is going to be way more interesting to me than almost anything else about it what how much has nintendo finally learned from a lot of mistakes that they made um that the other two manufacturers that they apparently don't want to compete with (laughs) have learned and have embarrassed them with in terms of online infrastructure and all those kinds of things and they have to learn from those things so there has to be an achievement system right yeah so that's one of the major things i know that 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 seems to be like weird to a lot of people but it's exciting because i was talking to greg about it i think on on corner greg about if they went through their virtual console library and made that all available, obviously on these NX, and I'm sure they're going to, and then just attach achievements to all of them, mm-hmm. I'd probably spend two thousand dollars on that thing. Yeah, like I, I would they probably, they, called, probably they called it NEX Remix, but uh, yeah, and sold it as a product. But, but like, but like, imagine just like <laughs> imagine just a way, a reason to go. You know, Jim Sterling did a really interesting um, uh, piece. Uh, you know, Jim Acquisition about emulation, which I thought was really interesting. And one of the things he was talking, about, I didn't agree with a lot of his assertions, but one of the things he said that I think is interesting, nonetheless, is that. Nintendo just asks you to buy these things over and over and over again, but there's no real reason to buy them over and over and over again, other than the fact that you want to play them on the new machine. Um, so like to take the time to like put new accoutrements into these different games, these old games to give you a reason to buy them for some of us, like a, the fifth time. I mean, I, I mm-hmm. own some, I must own, I bought Mario brothers, the original <laughs> Mario brothers, like literally on NES, SNES and all these things, probably seven times on yeah. game boy advance and on all the, like, you know, so so having some sort of ubiquity finally like putting that all together this is what i'm really excited about the machine i think is probably going to be fine but like the price is going to be concerning but i i'm interested to see like how everything runs on it and what the what the system is um and in terms of how it interacts with wii u and 3ds but also how it interacts with the the internet itself um i think is going to be really exciting and i and something in me tells me that they actually probably figured this out finally so yeah i I, I would be shocked if there's any type (laughs) of trophy or achievement system i want that really oh my god it would be so toned Um, but what you're talking about doing the going back to the virtual console oh no i don't sounds I don't necessarily I can't imagine them ever doing that. I don't necessarily that. think they're really? doing that, but yeah. it's possible. But if they don't have if they don't have an achievement system on their new games, they are fucking tone deaf. I, I, no, yeah. you're missing the point on the virtual console team. Is it'll be double dipping. Hey, it'll be Super Mario World now. Whatever they call NX. No, I get it. I understand yeah. that that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I don't think I can't see them doing that. I think Nintendo, at least so far, what they've done nothing to prove to me that they're not just about each game being its own specific world get nintendo games have had achievements for years they're just within the game yeah, yeah, yeah. right you know? but that's right. not the yeah. way the world works anymore and it certainly didn't work for them very well exactly but they do things differently which is why i just like i would love that i just like if they were to come out and be like i think it's this 50, nintendo 50, world i, 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 I would not say i feel 50. like they, i'd say I feel like we've 80, seen them 20. change stuff lately we've yeah, seen them we have we have which react. is why i give them 20 instead of zero <laughs> seriously though like I know. Yeah. that like, all of that that still sounds a, a step beyond what i think nintendo is capable of in terms of you know, giving the people what they want. Um, beyond true. that, they're very though, good at telling us what we want as opposed to giving us what we want. Exactly, <laughs> and then that's that's what they do. Um, the other side of it, though, I'm more interested in uh, less the the system features and stuff like that, but more the the physical, the hardware of it. Of all right, so if this is all true, what does that look like for multiplayer games then? Oh, so you break the controllers it, off the side. But like, what does that look like? They're, they're talking about the hub thing. Is there a, a way to do we each bring our own NX? And play I with bet. that, or do they? Is there like is the pro controller still going to be um, compatible with it? I which I assume too. it is. Yeah. And then from there, it's just like that is what I'm most concerned about. But I also think that they are going to nail. Um, I hope that uh, they make it so that it's it's easy and fun to play Smash Bros or Mario Kart with multiple people. If you only one person needs this system, yeah. if you have the system controllers, because right now the worst thing is having to every time we play a Wii U game for a Let's Play, depending on the game, it is syncing and figuring out which controllers we need and all this. Yeah, yeah. If they figure out a way to just it's there, it's set up, and you just need to bring it and play it. I think that's going to go such a long. I mean, high. can you imagine like all the trips we just took and all the trips we're about to take if we and we would bu- we would start booking seats next to each other every time and putting it up there and then breaking the controls off and we're playing Smash the entire. That'd be cool. Together. And so that then is the Wi-Fi interferes with the plane. We crash the plane. I'm most interested <laughs> in being able to be on a plane and put the thing screen up and not use its controller, but to yeah. use a real controller on that screen. Another possibility is that they could go legacy. They know that they sold a lot more Wii's than they sold Wii U's. I mean, the fact is it could be Wii Remote compatible. It could also, I think, significantly, especially for Japan, be 3D compatible for controller i mean 
you know, yeah, you may not be able to play the games on the 3DS, but you got a 3DS, bam, it's a Smash Brothers style dummy controller yep. and you can play along with your friends. They've got such a huge install base compared to the Wii U on 3DS that mm -hmm. I think that's another thing that might make sense for them. Yeah, just grab your 3DS. It works with that. Kids can play. And then you go over to your friend's house. They have this awesome new NX. Like, I want it too. You know, there, there's yeah. Christmas. I mean, why not do it that way? Yeah, and I think that with the NES Classic having the the same Wiimote proprietary connector thing, I think that and the new NES controller also using that. Yeah, I think it, it, it they, shows that they're, that's where they're going. They understand the protocols. And I'm remembering correctly, like, that you can control Smash Brothers on Wii U with that. With 3DS, the 3DS, right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, why not just extend that to the whole platform and make that another solution? You've got 10 times the, the uh, or five times the uh, 3DS controllers out there that you have uh, Wii U controllers. So why not make that compatible? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. The one thing that concerns me for it is when it's coming out. Um, doesn't March. make it a lot of sense. But I, it seems March? like they want, yeah, it's a bad time. I, I would try to get the, I would try to get the console out in the fall. Um, and we talked about this on the last on the last show, I think too. Like it just just feel like they're missing a lot of like easy holiday sales and all those kinds of things. But I guess the it's just, they're just not going to be ready, and you you don't want to hold it for another eight months or whatever. Yeah. This could be, be the dying holiday. light of consoles. It could be the dying come light. Come out and like <laughs> capture a whole bunch of stuff, <laughs> not that. compete with uh, uh, Xbox Slim. Yeah, and I mean, and I think you know, in, the headlines things have changed in the industry. Where now, like March is no longer just empty, but sure. still, I think that if Nintendo were to come out with Zelda and potentially a Mario or a Metroid or this or that, like that's that's exciting. You know, I think that it, that is enough for them to do stuff. Whether or whereas if it was in November. I do think that they would sell more, but I think then it would just kind of fall off a cliff right after that. Yeah, it, I mean, it just has for, that nice like. It could set them up for a two wave software rollout too. I mean, you, obviously they're spending a lot of time on launch titles. Hopefully there's going to be just a rush of amazing things that you want to play, and then you know you time it so that your second wave comes around November and you get that big Christmas boost. I mean, mm. I don't necessarily think that's a bad strategy at all. Yeah, we'll see how it all works out. The one thing, so I'm optimistic about it. Um, you know, vaguely optimistic about it. Um, and I'm excited. I'm interested to see what they have to say. They're going to announce it. It looks like in September, which is what I said last week, because I think that that makes a lot of sense. That gives them six months in between the launch of the console and when when they announce, which I think is a nice idea. Um, the one thing that I will never believe is that anyone's going to be interested in it until until it's uh, selling, like literally until it's I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how promising it seems. Uh, I, I still stand by the fact that Nintendo has lost a significant amount of of, of clout um, with core gamers that buy consoles. And I'd be interested to see um, if I'm wrong. You know, because all the evidence says I'm right. And uh, Pokemon Go and some 3DS flash in the pan titles is not going to change my opinion that like Nintendo has lost a lot of steam with people that are going to sustain them in this particular market. So um, so regardless of how I, I, I want to see, I need to see um, in the words of Whitney Houston, show me the receipts. Mm, <laughs> mm, mm. Yeah, this this news makes me so happy because it. With the Nintendo forever, and this is with a lot of things that I like, it's more about, all right, when's the bad news coming? And so far, it hasn't happened yet. So I'm really excited. September is months away, pretty much a month and a couple of weeks. So I'm really excited to, that we're finally going to actually see it so soon. Um, talking about launch titles, like I'm surprised you think Metroid's going to be there just because like I feel like Mario would make more sense. We know there's Zelda. I so, don't, I don't, yeah. I, that's why I don't think, I think because of Zelda, I don't think Mario makes any sense. To, to go alongside it. I don't think you want to get too crazy with it. Metroid's not as popular as we think, as we've talked about many times. So I think putting something like a B-tier title, which is if Metroid would be next to Zelda, um, I think would be way smarter than having Mario. I think Mario, to Jared's point, would be a fall game. Um, that that holiday push game or whatever. Because again, we haven't had a 3D Mario in a long time. Like mm -hmm. a truly 3D Mario. So um, since Galaxy 2, I guess. So, so um, you know, Wii U is conspicuously missing its Mario game because I'm sure it was moved a long time ago to NX. So... Um, yeah, so I think that I, I really do think Metroid is going to be a launch game. I think that that would be a smart, savvy move. I think that's why they're taking it on the chin with this Federation Force game in a way and kind of mm -hmm. just rolling it out and not really dealing too much with the criticisms of it, which I think are mostly stupid criticisms anyway. <laughs> and um, like, like you can't have like another game in the Metroid universe that doesn't have anything to do with Metroid. No, so, just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, by the way, what, what about 3D Land? You didn't, you didn't like the 3D Land? No, but that's he's not a real, about, like, a, that's a proper not a, 3D yeah, adventure that's not a 3D game. Mario this game. It's a 3D Mario oh, game. It's not. Don't, don't get on. started with Colin. I agree. No, 3D World's not. fantastic. It's called Super Mario 3D World. It's not a 3D game. It's not a 3D Mario game like Galaxy or It's the third pillar of Mario games. There's the 2D platformers, the 3D obstacle-based platformers like 3D Land and World, and then there's the the collectathon remember the best-selling handheld of all time was also a third pillar so therefore must be good right there, there we yeah go. so I'm, I'm i really do think a lot of the pessimism around this is is unfounded will the bad news come i'm sure but there there will <laughs> there will be there will be i think further leaks i think the thing leaks completely before it's announced 100 um but and they'll use the vita strategy of putting the bad news out like right in mid-february 
Oh, God. Just really take out its <laughs> proprietary memory cards. God fucking damn it! Tiny That's the other thing. No button. button. That's the other thing is obviously it's gonna have it's gonna have its own hard drive or whatever, which would be nice too. So if this just, thing just upping the cost a little has bit. those freaking baby buttons that the Vita or 3DS has, I'm gonna be so pissed. Maybe you should just it get shouldn't. on board with the buttons that no. are, everybody uses now. No. Tim. What, what buttons? Thumbs want? aren't that much bigger than mine. What I want, you want normal. Let me see your thumb. Normal people. No, what's normal people at buttons? Like, uh, the Wii U Gamepad has normal people buttons. The okay. Place PSP has normal people buttons. All right. You want like the, this big red Give me a console button. Buttons? Give me like, like a, a PS4, DualShock 4 buttons. I like That's the all I want. Button. I do enjoy it. If this button. is a real console, this should be a fucking real console, not no bullshit. Well, Nintendo, game, Nintendo games do rely traditionally more on face buttons, so I think that they're going to obviously be more. Can we know. also give a shout out to the fact that it's not just some touchscreen thing? I mean, maybe it will be on I'm the sure screen. This, I'm like, sure the screen will be touching. There, but that's fine. But I'm saying there's tactile buttons on this. Oh, my oh, my yeah, concern yeah, yeah. was we were going to get fucking an oval. Where uh, all the buttons, remember like all the things yeah, we saw where they yeah. had like the GameCube like drop down yeah. hooks or whatever. But it was like there's real buttons on the rumored. Thank God. Shout yeah, out to real buttons. It wouldn't be great if we're all just completely wrong about the whole thing. And they're like, it's so we we're have competing this long, with long discussion. And it's all just completely different. Like out, out, my, way more a million teraflops. It's a strange <laughs> alien box that you control with your brain. Like it's just, my dream is still that the NX is a digital platform platform that goes on PS4 and Xbox One, but that's never going to happen. That'd be amazing. 